Welcome to another episode on what will you do? Now, ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of issues that are happening, that is going on, and there are stories that are untold. And there are many stories that are unheard. And that is what I just basically decided to do with this particular theme. What will you do? Now, my question to you is that, hmm, in the context of marriage, how does this whole thing happen that a woman gets to meet this man and, or a man gets to meet this woman, they get married and all of that happens and later they get to know the whole story? How does that happen? And if it's you, what will you do at the end? Now, I just chanced on this story and it broke my heart when I read it. If you're, if you're going to be in a marriage that you know that at the end of the day, this marriage is, is, a, is, is a, a marriage built on fraud, I mean, you are a human being. The person you are marrying is also a human being. So just basically don't start it. This is, this is just first of all mind-blowing. Now listen to this story. It says that, young ladies, let me take this opportunity to urge you all to drastically scrutinize your men. Know his ins and outs, his past and ambitions, and most importantly, get to know how religious or unreligious he is before accepting their proposal. My broken pen story should serve as a caution study on your journey to marriage. We met at the Independence Square in 2017 at the Greater Works Summit. Now, can you imagine Greater Works Summit? Hey! That the people that you thought they are, in quote, spiritual, <laughs> you meet them on a spiritual ground, on a spiritual meeting, and you see the, t the, the outcomes at the end of the day. Now listen, he gave me a ride as there was mad traffic in town that night. He ex we exchanged numbers when I alighted and that was the beginning of our fairy tale. I was madly in love with him. He was almost perfect. Joseph never faulted in any way while we dated. Never did he get mad at me. He was always so calm, collected, organized and matured about everything. <laughs> Pretense. People can pretend. Oh, wow. Let's go on. What made him even more attractive was the fact that he was a businessman and never played with his work. Mm. He owns two estates in Kumasi and has invested in several businesses. Aside the fact that he is a good person, I always knew I was going to be, I was going to be comfortable with him <laughs> the word comfortable he popped the question on a private yacht the following year i thought it was too early though but the rock he put on my finger exonerated my doubts in my mind it was a diamond ring which sparkled more than anything i'd ever seen in this world that moment right there till date still stands as the happiest day of my life. We spent that whole night on the yacht talking about our future plans together. How many kids would you love to have? I asked jokingly. It's too early to think about kids right now. Let's just get married and shag every day until we are tired. <laughs> wow. Then we can think of kids and all the trouble they bring. We laughed it off and kissed throughout the night. Wow. You are getting, you just want to marry a man and think about this. Think about it. If it, two years into our marriage, I started asking some questions. Though Joe wasn't in favor of us having kids immediately, I was down for the responsibility. I mean, I was turning 33 years old and getting pregnant at that age would have been an ideal for me. I secretly visited my fertility clinic nearby once in a while. Once in a while. Everything is fine with you. Just have some patience. You, you will get pregnant soon. Hey! These were the doctor's same words every time I visited the clinic. Joe and I were having frequent sex. Even more frequent, frequent than we used to. So it was all just not making any sense to me as to why I wasn't getting pregnant. 
Our trip to New York was in three days and we had to start packing up. Joe was taking me there for Christmas holidays. I started to pack up some of our clothes while Joe was out to run some errands. And to my amazement while searching through his things, I found some documents which I noticed were from the same fertility clinic that I always visited. I opened the last envelope when I saw my doctor's signature on it. I started to get chills immediately. What in the name of the Lord will my husband be doing with my doctor that I had no idea about, I thought. It contained a receipt of a vasectomy operation done on Joseph. Two weeks before our wedding date in 2019, Joseph came home to meet a broken, distraught, crying wife on the floor right in front of his staircase. I cried even louder when I saw him run up to me. I slapped the paper on his face with rage. How dare you do this to me, Joseph? I mean, she exclaimed it, so I haven't, I haven't exclaimed it like that. But I'm, I'm sure you understood. You have deceived me all throughout our marriage. Explain this to me. Or let me rather say, lie to me. Lie to me. Like, lie to me. You've been doing all these years. You liar. Wow. He took a sheet of paper and shook his head in shame. He then sat down next to me, looking forward with a stained look on his face and said, Baby, I'm sorry, but I had to do what I did. I had no choice. You were so obsessed with having children, I had to take this. I had to take that bold step. His words got me more pissed. I felt so insulted, but just before I could raise my hand to give him a slap, he shouted at me. How did you think I amassed all this wealth? Huh? Tell me, baby. A 33-year-old owning these things, all these cars, all these houses, all these expensive trips, your expensive lifestyle. Wow. <laughs> God have mercy on us. How did you think I was able to afford and keep up the lifestyle? I felt confused at what point. But what has your riches got to do with your vasectomy? Stop trying to change the subject, you dirty liar. <laughs> this is a woman insulting the guy. You have been caught just starting explaining and cut rubbish. I uttered. That was when he dropped the bombshell. What I'm trying to tell you here is that I made a pact with an awkward group which I am still a member of. Never to father any kids whether biologically or not. As a trade for my wealth, I made a promise with blood never to have, wow, never to have any, wow, wow. So never to have any kids, he says. Whether mine or adopted, I will either go mad or die if I'm to break this promise. So stop with all this and let's move on with our lavish lives. I've given you the world. Let's enjoy, please. I could feel my soul leaving my body. I felt light all of a sudden and a sudden cold sensation came over me. I could not utter a word. He stood up to leave but stood halfway. And with a smile on his face, he turned and said, and please don't try and file for a, for a divorce. I, will ha I have spilled enough blood in this life. Wow. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, this is the story. Hey, goodness. You know how I'm feeling my heart right now? Wow. So if it is you 
who has experienced this, what will you do? What will you do? If she is your sister, <laughs> what will you do? Or maybe your cousin or your whatever, whatever. My question to you is, what will you do?